Allie with Potomac Beads. Join me in creating this layered ribbon earring to match Anna's layered ribbon necklace. You're going to be using peyote stitch and you can use a variety of different beads and counts and sizes to create this really, really easy, versatile look. Whether or not you want to do just an earring that has that nice wavy look to it or even layer for a necklace. This design is sure to use up some of the extra beads that you have sitting around. If you do want to gather any supplies, go ahead and check out the description in the link below to shop with us online. Gather up all your beads that you want to use of a multitude of different sizes, bugles, seed beads, 8-0s, 6-0s, 11-0s, 15-0s, and let's get started. So to begin this design, it is based on Anna and Jenny's live that they did with box extras. And in the design, we can really control the curvature based on how many different rows of our multi-drop peyote we're doing. I have here 11 O's, 11 Delicas, and two 15s that I'll be working with, as well as two rectangle forms. We're going to be starting at the bottom doing the peyote stitch, making a longer piece, and then we're gonna fold it over to get that ruffle of the earring. If you don't fold it over, you can see how Anna's collar lays when you have the more concentration along the bottom and then a little bit of gap at the top. If you want to, you can even enhance these earrings like Anna did on this collar design where you do a second row connected to the first. So you can really make it as long or as short as you want it to be. I have .006 wildfire beading thread on a size 12 needle with a stop bead at the end. We're going to begin with a pattern of three of our 11 O's. Then I'm going to go with four of my sparkle beige lined 15 O. Then we're going to go three with my mauve delicas and then four with my Duracoat galvanized champagne. And the 11 O was the matte dark bronze. Let that fall down next to your stop bead, and we're going to do a simple peyote stitch. So we're going to add four more of our champagne color, skip over the champagne, and sew back through the three delicas, bringing your needle out. This is even count peyote, which makes it so that bridge right at the top is very easy to see. From here, coming out through the delicas, I want you to add four more of your sparkle beige lines. Then you're going to go through your three 11 O's and out before your stop bead. That's going to group those up there for your second row of your peyote stitch. From here, we're going to add the opposite beads. Add three of your 11 O delicas and then sew through the four sparkle beige lined 15s. Give a nice little tight pull so you don't see a lot of extra thread. Likewise here, we skipped the delicas last time, so we're gonna add the delicas and then sew through the 15 O's and up to the top. Naturally, because the delicas are a little bit larger and the 11 O seed beads are a little bit larger than the 15s, it's already gonna start and create a little bit of a fanning effect. I'm going to turn now and do four of my 15s back through my delicas. And as you sew back through the beads that you add, it helps to make them sit in a straight row. From here, once again, I'm going to add four of my Sparkle Line Beige 15s and sew through the 11s. Now we're going to build a little bit more along the base or the bottom. So we are going to basically skip the top two rows in our peyote stitch. I'm going to add three of my 11 O's. So back through my 15s and act like this is the end of the bracelet. Turning around or the earring or the necklace. Turning around one more time, I'm going to do four of my 15 O's and come back through my three 11s. So see how we were able to just stop here and then continue on with the peyote just on the bottom two rows. From here, I'm gonna add three more of my 11 O's. So back up through the 15, and you can keep building and building along the bottom. However you build along the bottom, and however wider you make it, then the top is gonna to control that curvature. From here then, I'll go back after these two rows and add back in my start. 
So I'm going to add my Delicas here, and then go back up through the 15s. And see how you have a little bit of space right there in the Delicas? That's going to be how you keep track of your rows if you're trying to count. From here, I'm going to add my four 15s and back down the Delicas. Once again, sparkle line beige. So this is how we're getting that ribboning effect is that you're adding extras along the bottom. From here then, I'm gonna add one, two, and three. Back up through. And I'm gonna group it so that I have basically two groups of my Delicas before I skip rows and just concentrate on the bottom two. So I'm going back up through, adding the Delicas adding my 15s, and then to get the overlapping lapping ribbon effect that Jenny did on the earrings to Anna's design, we are going to actually start to fold it over after the fact. So I'm gonna continue adding in, and you can see, so I have my two groups of my Delicas there. Now I'm gonna concentrate and just do two groups along the bottom. Once again, the amount that you do along the bottom will help to control that curvature. The further you go out and the more that you skip completing the top two rows in the design, the more curve that you're going to get as you go back and link the bottom rows to the top. So here I am there adding two in, pick up my three elevens, add them back to the fifteens, and see how there's that gap there? Now we're going to go in and add our delicas, and then back through our elevens, and that's going to close up that gap. and that gets that curvature. See how that's already starting to do that curvature and that wave? That's what we want to happen. That was one time down here, and I'm gonna continue to feed and do one more time where I complete the four rows of the peyote stitch, and then go back to just two rows on the bottom. So that's the pattern that I'm establishing, is doing that two rows down and then back up. Once again, the amount of bottom that you do is gonna create and hold in that curvature that's happening. So coming through here again, there's a grouping of two, back up through the 15, and then back down. And as I come back down then, I'll do a row where I just add in the 11s to get that nice curvature. Skipping the top two rows twice, and then going through all four rows again. So you can see here how many rows I've done, and you can kind of see that grouping of two Delicas to basically three of my other rows as I go up and do every other stitch where I do two that the Delicas are meeting, and then I do and build on the bottom. So obviously you're gonna have more groupings of your peyote bottom than you are at the top. You can see that skirting effect starting to happen where it's getting wider and having that natural curvature. If you wanted to curve even more, you'll do more rows at the bottom here of those skipping the top two and just concentrating on the bottom two before going back and connecting to the top two rows. That's how you're going to get more and more and more of that curvature. Now in her earrings, what Jenny did is actually take this top row here and we're going to actually use an accordion style and we are going to sew it back together. So we're going to go kind of every other, see how this is folding and grouping together to get that nice ribboning effect. To do so, I'm going to, while I'm coming out the top of my peyote stitch, grab my form. You can gather it together if you want to apart from the form or you can attach it to the form at the exact same time. I'm going to go sew through my form here. And you can see Jenny just used a jump ring. You can use a jump ring. You can use a form. You can just put a bead at the top too if you want. I'm going to count back one, two, three rows. So I'm skipping two in the middle and I'm going to sew down through that gold one. So there's two empty rows there at the top. And that's going to attach it as the first stitch to my form. From here, I'm going to go back up through the one right next to it. So I'm coming out the gold and I'm going back into the gold, the one next to it. I'm going to once again go through the form. Coming out the form, I'm going to leave one, two rows empty and go down 
the third row in line. And again, that's going to form that riveting effect. Go up the one next to it. Go through your form when you're coming up the top. Skip over two and go down through. And again, that bunches up that ribbon. So see how that's starting to bunch up and get the design that you're looking for? Go back up through them, the one next to it. And depending on how many rows you have, you can choose to go up and down at different levels. That's up to you. And as I pull, it's bringing that form more into play. I'm going to, once again, go through the form, getting, oops, getting my thread attached to the form. You can naturally see how it's going to go one way or the other. And then once again, going to that last row and sewing down. So see how that attaches it to the form. You're getting that nice ruffling effect, almost like a little skirt hanging out the bottom. If you want to even go further and make it bigger, you can do that depending on the size of your earring. If you want to attach it more to the form, you can also go back through and attach it more to the form as well. So there's a lot of different options when it comes to how to make the earring look. From here, it's gonna be really, really simple. And what I'm going to do is kind of fold this over to get more of that ruffly effect. I'm gonna go back up, folding it over. I'm just gonna pick an area to go back up through and through the form. So I have it folded over itself back up attaching to the form. And this really is free form then. I come down on the other side, grab one of the groupings here of four, and sew down through as well. Once you're down through that row of four then, just the row of four, bring your needle out. and that'll establish kind of that turnover there. It bunches it up, it gets that riveting in effect, and the last thing I have to do is go down through my peyote on an angle. So I'm gonna go through my delicas here, cross over through my 15s, out through the 11 that's next to it, and all I'm doing now is sewing to get back to that stop bead so I can tie a knot at the end. So there I have it down the 11. I'm just gonna zigzag through here. Going back through the 11s till my 11s meet. And I can tie my knot. If you want to, you can move your stop bead out of the way, bring your thread back up a little bit, so that way the thread is between your beads. And once you have your thread, Establish that it's coming out the same line, grab that stop bead, pull it off, tie these two thread ends together. This design is so versatile. Make sure to comment below and give your feedback for any sort of pattern that you did, whether or not you did four along the bottom to get more ruffles rather than two groups of peyote. Take your thread and needle then, go back through the design bring it on out, and then burn off your two thread edges. So simple and based on multi-drop peyote. And now I'm just gonna attach it to my ear wire so I have a fun and funky look to a really, really nice kind of modern earring. Thanks so much for joining me in creating this nice ribbon layered earring. Remember, if you do want to check out the longer extended class version, Anna and Jenny just did a live on the color itself and also how to kind of start that earring to build onto this video. We'll put the link to it in the description below, so make sure to check it out there. When you like the videos, it also helps to give a little thumbs up and give your feedback if you did any differences in the designs, changed up the seed beads, added a crystal attached right to a wired loop, 
and really made it your own. Remember this bracelet design, necklace design, earring design is so versatile that it can be used in so many different ways. As always, if you want to, you can post your pictures of your own design in our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything from us here at Potomac Beads. As always, thanks so much for watching. Thanks to Anna and Jenny for the inspiration for this from their live. And I can't wait to see what you guys create.